Dumelang, let us do question 10. And in question 10, we are given a single trigonometric function. And that's all we're given. And we need to determine the constant A and the trigonometric function f of x. Please note that for me to reduce this trigonometric function, I will simplify what is on the left hand side. Basically, what I'm going to simplify is everything that is on the left hand side. And when I simplify what is on the left hand side, I will pay attention to my identities. Now, my identity here will be 10 theta. And you will notice that 10 theta is the same as sine theta all over cos theta. However, when you have 1 all over 10, that is a reciprocal of 10 theta. 1 all over 10 theta will be the opposite, which will be cos theta divided by sine theta. I will simply substitute sine theta all over cos theta where there's 10 theta. And where there's 1 all over 10 theta, I will substitute cos theta over sine theta. That's what I did. And then I'm going to work with what is inside the bracket by finding my LCD, the lowest common denominator. In this case, it'll just be cos theta times sine theta. The numerator will be sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. I don't know if I need to explain that, but I'll, by now you should be able to know how to get that. Um, just to let me just explain it anyway. So inside that bracket, I've got sine theta divided by cos theta, right? And the second term inside that bracket was cos theta divided by sine theta. I took the first fraction and I multiplied it by sine theta all over sine theta. And I took the second fraction, I multiplied it by cos theta all over cos theta. And the reason why I did that is to make sure that my denominators are the same. And once my denominator is the same, I will put the whole of the numerator under the same denominator, which will be the cos theta times sine theta. However, the numerator will have changed to sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. So basically, that's how I got to this over here. Once I've done that, what I notice is that I still have division outside that bracket. The next thing I'm going to do is to change that division to multiplication. And when I change this division to multiplication, please note that the denominator bracket will change how does it change? What was in the numerator will be in the denominator. What was in the denominator will be in the numerator. Basically, cos theta times sine theta will be in the numerator. And sine squared theta minus cos squared theta will be in the denominator. And that will be as a result of me changing that division sign to multiplication. Now, once I have changed that to multiplication, I also notice that the denominator inside that bracket looks like this. Well, not that actually. It looks like the cosine double angle. Not the sine double angle, but it looks like the cosine double angle. And what I'm going to do is that in that bracket, I'm going to take out negative as a common factor. And when I take out negative as a common factor, cos squared theta will be positive and sine squared theta will be negative. At the same time, I will change the double angle, which is sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta will be equals to 2 sine theta times cos theta. Now, inside that bracket, I've got cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is the expanded form for cos double theta. Angle. I am going to change cos squared theta minus sine squared theta to cos 2 theta. By so doing, let's check what I will have. I'm going to take the negative and put it right 
um, at the end to the far left, okay? And then I realized that I am simply multiplying and I'm dividing. I am just going to look at same factors in the numerator and the denominator. I realized that sine theta is there in the numerator. It is there in the denominator. I'll just cross it out. Cos theta is there in the numerator and is there in the denominator. I'm just going to cross that out. And cos 2 theta is there in the numerator and is there in the denominator. I'm going to cross that out as well. I will be left with negative half times sine theta, meaning that A will be negative half and the function f of theta will be sine theta. That's it. Number two wants us to determine the values of theta for where theta lies between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Please pay attention to the brackets. Square brackets means that 0 is included and that 360 is also included. When they talk about the identity not being valid, you will focus more on your denominators. And I will highlight my denominators, which is that 2 sine theta, and the whole of 10 theta minus 1 all over 10 theta. That is the denominator because um, we are dividing the numerator, which is the first fraction. We're dividing it by um, that whole bracket. That's why that whole bracket that I highlighted in red is the denominator. And another denominator I notice is this 10 theta over here that I will highlight in green. So I'll start with the first denominator, which is sine 2 theta and equate it to 0 and simply solve for theta. So I will find the inverse sine of um, theta and the inverse sine of theta will simply be 0. And the inverse sine of theta will just give me um, 2, 0 degrees times 360 degrees times k, where k is an element of integers. What I'm going to do here is to divide both sides by 2, I'll end up having theta should not be equal to 180 times k, where k is an element of integers. So when you count, when you substitute, I'm going to substitute any integer to make sure that I get a number that is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. And when I do that, I will get um, 0. And if I substitute 1, I will get 180. And if I substitute 2, I will get 360. Okay. Now, these are the values that theta cannot be equals to. So theta cannot be equals to 0. Theta cannot be equal to 180 degrees. And theta cannot be equal to 360 degrees. Um, I just needed to change something because I didn't read the question properly. I thought the question was asking me for which values of theta are we going to, can't theta be equals to, uh, to the extent that we'll have an invalid answer. But actually it wants you to calculate the values of theta, that theta must be equal to for you to have a valid, um, a, a not valid answer and as i've said for you to have an invalid answer here um what you need to do is to focus more on your denominators i have already done uh, i've already calculated theta using sine and that is because i was just using only the first part of the sine formula i just still need to use the second part of the sine formula which is 180 degrees minus the inverse sine of zero. And when you calculate that, it'll simply be the same as 180 degrees plus 360 degrees. And then you just substitute any value into K. For as long as whatever you're substituting into K 
is an integer. All right. First of all, I solved for 2 theta. So I had 2 theta is equals to 180 degrees plus 360 degrees. Because I'm solving for theta, I'm going to take that and divide it by 2. And theta will be equal to 90 degrees plus 180 degrees. Then I can do my substitution. But when I do my substitution, I am going to pay attention to the fact that Theta must be between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Hence, I'm going to start with the first. I don't want to say integer. Um, Yeah, it is an integer either way. And the first number that I'm going to start with, which is an integer, will be 0. So where there's k, I will substitute 0. And when I substitute 0 where there is k, I will get theta is equal to 19. And then substitute 1 where there is k, then I will get um, 90 degrees plus 180, which is 270. And there's nothing else I can do from there. I'm done with the sign. We good? The next one, I'm not going to focus on 10 theta at all. I am going to focus on the, that whole denominator, which is 10 theta minus 1 all over 10 theta. That is what I am going to focus on. What I can simply say about 10 theta is that um, normally in that interval from 0 to 316, 10 theta will be undefined at 90 degrees as well as 270, which is what I've already calculated when I calculated theta using the sine ratio. So that was not important at all, even if I didn't use this principle here, my answer was still going to be right. But I'm going to focus on this over here. I realized that this is an equation to make it easy, I'm going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying everything. By multiplying everything by 10 theta. When I multiply everything by 10 theta, I will have 10 th squared theta minus 1 is equals to 0. Then when I solve for 10 theta, 10 theta, I mean 10 squared theta will be equal to 1. And solving for 10 theta, I'm going to square root both sides, and the square root of 1 will be plus or minus 1. Then I'm going to substitute that. Okay, I will start with um, 1. When I substitute it in the formula, actually, I substituted both of them. I substituted that minus plus 1. And when I substitute um, negative 1 and positive 1, where there is theta, I will have an angle that is equal to plus or minus. 45 degrees. Please know that um, k will be multiplied by 180 because 10 theta completes the circle after every 180 degrees. Now, focusing on negative 45, I am simply going to substitute 1 where there is k. And when I substitute 1 where there is k, I will end up having 135, which is negative 45 degrees plus 180. That will give you 135, which is in that interval between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. And then I'm going to use the same formula, but now where there is k, I will substitute 2. So I'll have negative 45 degrees plus 180 degrees times 2, which is the same as negative 45 degrees plus 360, and that will give me 315 degrees. And I'm going to go to the positive 45, do the same thing. But because it's positive 45, I will substitute 0, which will give me 45, and then substitute 1, which will give me 45, plus 180, that will be 225. And that's it. That's all I needed to do with respect to this question. I hope I made it easy. Try this one out and answer that question. Again, thank you. Thank you for watching. And please keep on watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification button and let your friends know about this channel. Hustle.